Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to Raven Gaming Labs and welcome to this lovely Godot tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at baking uh, vertex color data inside of our mesh and you know inside of Blender and then importing it and using it inside of Godot. So I've already made a very basic uh, Godot scene here and I've also already made a basic material which we can use so we can save a little bit of time. So let's go on ahead and go over to Blender here and I'm just gonna select everything and delete it. And then I'm gonna hit Shift A, Mesh, and I'm gonna add the monkey in. And the reason for this is it already has, you know, a little bit of geometry. Now, what would you wanna use this for? Well, uh, you could use it for quite a lot of things, but in particular, if you're making a older school retro style game, um, you can bake in, you know, vertex colors, ambient occlusion, all kinds of other stuff to, you know, add a bit of extra life. And, you know, that is actually how a lot of old games, like a lot of old PlayStation games, uh, actually used a lot of vertex coloring, sometimes even in place of textures. Um, so if you're trying to create something classic like that, this is a very useful technique, or if you just want to add a little bit of extra detail uh, to your mesh. Now, I will say that if you have a super high poly mesh, it's probably not going to look particularly great. It may or may not. Uh, you'll probably have to use, you know, more samples and so forth. Um, but experiment, figure out what works and all that good stuff. Okay, so we have our monkey here. Now, what do we need to actually, you know, import? Well, actually, sorry, to actually bake our AO. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to go over to here to the object data properties, color attributes, and we're gonna add a new color attribute. We'll just leave the defaults, it's totally fine. And that is the only thing that's required uh, on this mesh. We don't even need a UV map. And then we'll go to render properties, we'll set it to cycles, I will set it to GPU compute and experimental. For light paths, I will set it to full global illumination just to have a little bit of extra there. And for our render, we're going to turn off noise threshold uh, because this basically it's a performance optimization. We don't necessarily want it. We can keep the denoise on and the number of samples. This will affect the quality of the ambient occlusion. So just for the sake of argument, I'm going to set it to two. And then I'm going to go down to bake and I'm going to select ambient occlusion and target. I'm going to set active color attribute. And then we'll just hit bake and it'll pretty much be instantly done. Now you're probably gonna notice here, you can't see anything. Even if you go into the material preview, you can't tell that anything's there. So we'll go to shading and then we'll select our material. Um, and what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna search for the ambient occlusion node. Now you can adjust this uh, for like the number of samples and so forth and it will actually affect the bake uh, in this scene over here. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to type in color attribute. And I'm going to set it to color. And then I'm going to apply this here. And we can zoom in. And as you can see, we now have our... I'm going to go actually to layout here. You can see that we actually have our ambient occlusion. It's all baked in. All that good stuff. But now I'm going to set it to 4096, which was the original default. And we're going to hit bake. And it'll take a second. And you'll now see that with more samples, it's a lot smoother. Uh, it doesn't have that really harsh, deep, dark black around the edge there. So now let's go on ahead and export this. And we will export it as a wavefront. You can use, uh, you know, GLB, all that sort of stuff. It's entirely up to you. Um, just make sure that you export your vertex data. So you have to select the geometry here for colors. This uh, this lovely new Wavefront OBGA exporter by Blender is super awesome. And I'm just going to call this monkey because that's the name of the mesh. And you also want to triangulate the mesh if you've never uh, exported out before. And we're just going to export the Wavefront OBJ file. And now I'm going to switch back to Godot. And I'm going to open up my file explorer here on my other window. And I'm going to select the meshes folder. And I'm going to throw the monkey in. And then I'm just going to... Actually, can I just do that? No, I can't do that, of course. 
All right, well, I'll just throw it in and then for the transform, I'll just set it back to zero. So it's all in the center. And like I said, I already have a bit of a scene here with a point light right here or an Omni light. And I'm just gonna drag and drop this material. Now you'll notice that it's just a kind of okayish stone texture, but it gives a little bit of uh, depth there. And you can see the shadow from the light and all on here, but we have no ambient occlusion. So how do we actually, you know, apply this? Well, with the standard material, there is something called vertex color and you can check the uh, use as albedo uh, color and it will mix it in with the um, it'll mix it in with the uh, the diffuse or the albedo texture there and now you can see that we have a little bit of shadowing and depth to our model that we didn't have before and this is just part of the uh, the model it's very cheap by the way this is a very cheap and very old school method to add ambient occlusion and just other you know, depth to the model. And you can also use it with uh, vertex painting as well, which is something we're gonna take a really quick look at here. And we are going to go to sculpting and then in sculpting, we're gonna select vertex paint. And you can see we already have our very beautiful uh, vertex shadowing all around our mesh. And now what we're gonna do is, I don't know, I'll just select green. I'm just gonna paint on the top here. And I'm going to set oh, the strength is already at one. So it paints based on the vertices, obviously. Now you could use this vertex data for a lot of other stuff as well, if you wanted to. Um, so there's a lot you can do with this. This will probably won't be the last tutorial on this particular uh, method, but we can make the, uh, the head here uh, a very lovely, vibrant green. And then we will use red. And we'll just give him a little bit of extra right here. There we go. Nice. All right. And then we'll just do some kind of strange blue straight down here. Actually, I'm going to undo that. Do it on the eyebrows. Around the eyebrows. There we go. And I may have accidentally have, uh, mixed that in there. But that's okay. Okay, so now we have a very ugly, uh, <laughs> a very ugly uh, model here, but we're gonna go on ahead and just re-export that. And then we'll go back into Godot and then we'll drag and drop and there you go. You now have your vertex colors and as you can see, it's blending in uh, with our texture. And it's given us quite a unique look. So you can use this for, like I said, you can use this for quite a lot of different effects. Um, so hopefully it gives you some ideas. And there's also the is RGB, but as this says here, if true vertex colors are considered to be stored in sRGB color space and are converted to linear space during rendering, if false vertex colors are to be stored in linear color space and are rendered as is. And also lovely note, uh, only when using forward plus and mobile rendering methods, not with compatibility. I believe compatibility is the open shell render. Um, and we can turn this on and you can see that when we turn this on, the color gets a little bit closer to what we would see inside of Blender, which is pretty cool. So there you have it. That's literally it. Um, so I hope you guys do some, you know, really cool stuff with this. This is like I said, it's a great technique for making like old style games or just adding a little bit of extra depth to your game, particularly if it's not very dynamic uh, and you're like, Let's say you're building a level inside of Blender, for example, for some reason, and you want to import everything, you could just bake in uh, Vertex AO or all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of different uh, things that you could bake into here. And um, yeah, just have a really nice look. I actually really quite like this. Well, except for the coloring and all that, that part's not, <laughs> that part's not super great, no. But uh, I do I do like it with just the AO, uh, particularly if you have like a decently high poly mesh. Uh, it tends to look pretty good. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set this back to material preview. And I'm going to undo this really quick. Uh, da, da, da. Let's try to get rid of all of it. Perfect. So we're back. So now what I want to do 
is I'm just going to showcase this, not inside of um, Godot. And I'm just going to subdivide this twice. And then I'm going to auto smooth. That should work fairly well. And then now I'm just going to rebake. Now this might take a second because, you know, there's quite a bit more vertices now. But I just want to showcase the difference between, like, you know, uh, a 15,000 triangle or 15,000. Uh, actually, it's 15 and a half thousand uh, poly model versus what was it like 900 uh, before. This is actually taking quite a bit of time. I probably should have lowered the number of samples there, but. You know, we're halfway through now, so we're just going to just going to ride it out. OK, so as you can see, when you have significantly higher um, poly models, you can see the uh, I mean, this doesn't look too bad, but you can also see where it's kind of I mean, it's it's there, you know, Um but it doesn't look nearly as good. In my opinion, this, at least for baking AO, tends to work best on meshes that aren't super high poly. Although it does look fairly decent. Um, but, you know, if we go into wireframe view here or here, nah, not that wireframe view. We'll go into this one. Yeah, it's just, you know, too many vertices isn't necessarily a good thing. But like I said many times already, if you're making an old school, like, you know, retro 90s look game, uh, vertex uh, baking in AO and color through vertex data is something that you would probably want to do. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, uh, you can become a member. There's a link to it down below. And if you have any other tutorials that you'd like to see, do let me know, and I'll see you all in the next one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Raven Gaming Labs. Thanks to all the members and viewers who make RGL possible. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so that you can be notified. If you want to become a member, hit the join button or link in the description below. Members get early access to videos, member-exclusive content, and more. As well, don't forget to join our awesome community over at Discord. Y'all have a good one.